Crossovers. Give the fans what they want. Yeah? Well, someone has to lose. So who's the biggest loser here? Supposedly born out of an April Fool's Day idea, the two most well-known modern Japanese horror icons face off in one of the most highly anticipated crossovers since Freddy vs. Jason. No, oh, you didn't care about Freddy vs. Jason? Must have been just me then. Okay guys, you can take a step back. It's time for the ladies to take over. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans and welcome to this video about Sadako vs. Kayako. After buying a second-hand VHS deck in order to dub her parents' wedding video onto DVD, Natsumi finds the cursed video inside the deck. Of course she watches it, and then gets a mysterious call full of horrible digital feedback, and thanks to the fact that her professor at university is obsessed with urban legends, how fortuitous, she's been given the bad news that she will die in two days. Yes, two days is the new seven days. At the same time, Suzuka and her family move next door to the cursed house, where everyone who enters dies a quick yet horrible death. While desperately trying to find a way to stop the curse from taking her life within the two days, Natsumi and her friend Yuri team up with Kyoso and Tamao, two spirit mediums who come up with the clever idea to let Kayako and Sadako kill each other in order to break all the curses they're responsible for. You know, the concept is quite cool, and since I'm a fan of Freddy vs Jason, I'm always going to be comparing the two films because they are a little bit similar. And just a heads up, there's going to be some spoiler talk for obvious reasons. Crossover movies are a double-edged sword. The general idea is that fans of both franchises get to see which one of their spirits is the best, but the reality is always different, and the hardcore fans of both franchises are usually the ones that end up the most disappointed. Luckily for me, I'm more of a casual viewer of The Ring and Jew on The Grudge films. I haven't seen all the films in both of the franchises, and thus, I have no attachment to either of the two spirits. But the one thing I knew, and that was from Freddy vs Jason, is that there would definitely be no winner. So the ending didn't quite disappoint me as much as I thought it would. While I think the ending was a missed opportunity to create a single standalone film where both spirits could have just killed each other off, the idea of creating a sequel featuring a Mega Sadako or an Uber Kayago or whatever they want to call her and then not announcing it is a little annoying. Personally, I feel this movie is very much tailored towards Sadako fans. The first hour of the film feels mostly comprised of scenes discussing Sadako, with only the occasional switch back to Suzuka and the Grudge House. I did like the scene where the four young boys enter the house and never come back out. That was actually pretty awesome. With that said, who's the best character in the movie? Well, we have a few candidates. There's Professor Morishige, who is willing to die for his work. That's dedication. He also gets points for not being a creep when two pretty girls rock up to his office telling him they're about to die. Then there's Yuri, who's willing to take a bullet for Natsumi by watching the tape and saving her from the curse. And of course, you just knew that Natsumi would be blaming her for putting her in this situation. No Natsumi, you could have looked away from the TV screen when the tape was playing. Or there is the smartass Tamao. Talk about shooting from the hip. She doesn't hold back when it comes to the brutal comments and being honest about the whole situation. Honestly, I'm not sure I would want her on my side. And lastly, could it be the person who wrote the English fan subs that I used to watch the movie? Harry Potter spell quotes during the incantation scenes? What a crack up. It's actually really sad that I didn't find any excitement with the three spirits in this film. Yes, you have to count Toshio. He gets a few kills in the movie, more than Keiko does. I think the most creative kill scene in the movie is when Natsumi is possessed by Sadako during the cleansing ceremony and causes all that carnage at the shrine. That scene was pretty cool. It's like she was getting revenge for being spat on and forced to drink liters of liquids. But when it comes to the actual spirit battle, wow what a disappointment. The Sadako Kayako fight at the end feels like it's being held back. And with good reason, it would have looked ridiculous. Now, a lot of people know about the unrelated Chinese knockoff film Bunshin Saba vs Sadako, where the Chinese pen fairy called Bixian fights against Sadako. 
The movie is insane and ridiculous, but a lot of fun, because unlike this film, it doesn't take itself seriously. Thus, watching BCN and Sadako fly around the room attacking each other is ironically hilarious. The filmmakers knew what they were doing there. In this film, you could tell the filmmakers were a bit scared to let them fight for longer than they should have been, because then the movie would have turned into a parody rather than a serious film. And in the end, that's the real letdown of the film. It takes too long for the spirits to meet, although the journey to get there is pretty good. And when they do meet, it's over far too quick and then results in an ending where they merge together. Imagine if Freddy vs Jason ended that way. We'd have a hockey masked zombie with knives for fingers making wisecracks in people's dreams. Hmm, that sounds pretty cool. Well, if you're a fan of either franchise, you'll probably like the film, but not love it. If you're a casual horror fan, this movie is more than a passing curiosity. It's actually well worth a watch. Is it a crossover film done right? Well, it's not like we have a lot to compare it with. I liked Godzilla vs Kong because again, I'm not a fan of either franchise, so I can just enjoy the films without picking out all the things that are wrong. It's definitely not perfect, but it has its fun moments. It would have been better if it was a little more balanced, so it didn't feel like a Sadako movie with Kayako in it, but you know what, I'll take it. I still give it a thumbs up. If you've seen it, what did you think? Thank you for watching this video. Please press like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.